Hey, this is Coach Reeves. Today, I'm going to introduce you into inverses. This is probably going to be one of the easiest topics we're going to do for a while. <sighs> Stay with me. It's going to be pretty good. All right, watch this. They're going to ask you to plot these ordered pairs. So we're going to plot 3, negative 2, negative 1, 5, 4, 0, negative 2, negative 4. There, we plotted those. And then they're going to ask us to list the domain and the range for these ordered pairs. The domain is our x values. So I'm going to ask you to list your x values smallest to biggest, and we're not going to repeat a value. Okay, so this is an X, this is an X, this is an X, this is an X. My smallest X value is negative two, and then negative one, and then three, and then four. They're gonna ask us to define the range or state the range. Your range is going to be your Y values. And my y values are negative 2, 5, 0, negative 4. We will list those also smallest to biggest, and we will not repeat a value if it happens. So my smallest y value is negative 4. The next smallest y value is a negative 2. Then we have a 0. And then we have a 5. That's our domain and range, simple enough. They're gonna ask us to find the inverse of the ordered pairs. What I'm gonna ask you to do is switch the places of the X and the Y values, just flip-flop them. This is my X, this is my Y. I'm just gonna ask you to switch places. So the inverse, the inverse for this ordered pair would be negative two comma three. We just switch places. And we do the rest of them with this or these ordered pairs. We flip flop them. We're gonna say that this is gonna be five negative one. This will be zero four. And this will be negative four two. They're going to ask us to gra graph this equation, y equals x. Normally when we graph a line, we ask you to start with the y-intercept. But there's nothing here for your y-intercept. So remember, we would put a plus zero for that invisible zero. So we would start here at the origin, or at zero is my y-intercept. And then we would apply the slope. My slope is here, and there's an invisible one in front of our x. But slope is always a fraction, so we'll change this to 1 over 1. So we would go up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1, or we could go down 1, left 1. But I would connect those dots, and we would have a line that would look like this. This is this equation, y equals x, y equals x. They're gonna ask us, is to, they want you to plot the inverse ordered pair in a different color. So I'm gonna plot these on our graph at negative two, three, negative two, positive three, neg uh, positive five, negative one, 0, 4, x is 0, y is 4, negative 4, negative 2. Then they're going to ask you for the domain of the inverse. Now remember what we said, domain is the x values. We need the x values. This is an x, this is an x, this is an x, this is an x. So we're going to list them smallest to biggest. Our smallest x is negative 4. 
Our next smallest x is negative 2. And then we have a 0. And then we have our 5. But I want you to notice, look at this. Look at this domain of the inverse. And look at the range. Those are the exact same thing. So if I ask you to find the range of the inverse, which is our y values, what do you think this is going to look like? If this range is this domain, what do you think this range will be? It's going to be the original domain because we flip-flopped or we swapped the x and the y values. So my range, my range will be negative 2, negative 1, 3, and 4. So when all we have is points that are plotted, we're going to list individual numbers. Okay? But this is our domain. This is our range. Now they're going to ask you to look at this picture. And we're going to draw a conclusion. But what I want you to notice is if this was just a giant crease in our paper or we folded our paper along this line, these two points are equal distance from the line. They would match up if we folded it together. These two points would match up, and these two points would match up. So what we're going to say is, on our, our conclusion that we're going to draw, is what conclusion can you draw from comparing? Obviously, we talked about the domain and range, but from the graph, the graph of the inverse is a reflection over the function y equals x. So our conclusion is the graph of the inverse is a reflection over the function y equals x. They're going to give you two more problems to practice on. Same thing. Find the domain. Find the range. Find the inverse. List the domain and the range of the inverse. Plot both. Okay? The next page on the back side. Kind of simple. So look at the directions. Always read it. says graph the inverse and state the domain and range for each as an inequality. So what we want you to start doing is I want you to put a little dot right here at this endpoint. Put a dot here where it turns. Put another dot right here where it turns. And put a dot at this endpoint. We're going to set up a little T-chart. And we're going to list the location of these points. I'm at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we're at negative 6, positive 7. I'm going to be at negative 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. I'm at negative 2, positive 3. I'm at positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 5, 3. And I'm over here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 7, negative 3. But they're going to ask you, we're going to talk about the inverse. Remember when we found the inverse, we switched the x and the y. So we're going to create a new t-chart for the inverse. And we're going to switch the x and the y. And this will now become 7, negative 6, 3, negative 2, 3, 5, and negative 3, 7. These are the inverse. And if I ask you to plot them, we would come over here at 7, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's 7, negative 6. 3, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 3, positive 5. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And negative 3, 7. 
negative 3, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we would connect our dots. And if we drew a line, this is not going to be pretty, but I'm going to wing it real quick. It would be kind of a reflection over there. You see what I'm talking about? Okay, so they're going to ask you, it says we're going to state the domain and range as an inequality. So remember now, the domain, the domain is our what? X values and our range is our Y values. Okay? But as an inequality, it's a little bit different, but it's really kind of simple. Okay? So my domain here, let's make this black. My domain, I need you to, again, start with the smallest x value. So over here, my smallest x is going to be a negative 3. This is my smallest number. So we're going to ask you to write less than or equal to. And my domain, my domain is my x values. We're going to go another less than or equal to. And then I'm going to ask you to write your largest, your biggest x value, which is 7. This is your domain as an inequality. My range. My range as an inequality. Well, go to your y values. What's your smallest y value? Negative 6. Less than or equal to. Remember, my range is my y values, less than or equal to, what is your biggest y value? 7. There is your domain and your range as an inequality. Simple as that, okay? Now, why do we always go less than or equal to? It's because we're going smallest to biggest. Okay, so this big guy is always way over here, and that's why we're opening up, or the greater side is over there. So if you'll do it this way, all you do is you always point him to the left, and we're going to start with the smallest number, and we'll end with the biggest number. So when you have these problems on your, on your worksheet, we're going to ask you to finish the worksheet. We're going to ask you to come in and put dots. Put a dot here, put a dot here, put a dot here, put a dot here, put a dot here. Create a table, list your points, create another table by just flipping flop, flip flopping and switching the X and the Y values. That's all you got to do. Okay? And then you can choose and write your domain and range. If you have any questions, please ask, please email, let us know. But we're going to need you to complete the rest of the worksheet as for good practice. Got it? Finish that up.